Hey guys, welcome back to another Sunday night show. We have a holiday shortened week. I believe Christmas Eve, we are going to observe the Christmas day holiday. I am still trying to figure out how the market has digested the Fed news. We saw this massive, massive rally from 4,600. I said 46, not 36. Yeah, 4,600 on S&P futures. I now am uh, sort of trading the March futures um, last week. Uh, all the way to like 47.04 uh, last week. And then it just got clobbered. I'm not sure um, if the market is going to be risk off this week. I think we're going to watch the tape action on Monday and figure it out. We could still have a Santa Claus rally. Um, and But I, I still expect the rally to be capped at like 47.40 or something like that. But you just never know. We had this incredible rally last Wednesday. And then on a Thursday, Friday, we seem to have given all of that rally back. Anyway, let's get right into some of the trades this week. We have some interesting action. Let me just make sure my voice is recording. We have some interesting action this past week. Um, first, I just want to talk about AMC. I mentioned that last week. You know, a lot of people were um, basically uh, buying dips in AMC and constantly buying it. I think that primary trade is dead. The reason I say that is, um, you know, take a look at a lot of other high flyers last year, Space, Tilray, all those trades. Those primary trades are dead. And people have been throwing out AMC numbers getting to 10,000 on Reddit. Clearly, these are not professional traders. I, I don't really see that happening ever. But even beyond that, we saw a massive rally in AMC. It was probably hands down my best trade of the week was AMC. When I say the trade is dead, I mean not having to be so cognizant about the price, but kind of knowing that AMC will be able to bounce at some point because shorts need to cover. Listen, that the rally that occurred from Wednesday, Wednesday pre-market AMC was like $20 and change, $20 and change. I took a fairly large position and I wrote it out for uh, till Thursday. I cashed out around $27, one of my best trades, uh, not only of the week, pro but probably for the last two, three months. And I did it because AMC did have a massive, massive bleed out from 45 to about 20. And also AMC has a very large short position and shorts have been desperate to get out for tax reasons as well, because if they get out this year, they can deduct their losses this year against other wins. And it's a great, great trade for a lot of hedge funds to just get out at a loss. They're getting out at a good price. But one of the things is the statistics is not complete here. I think a lot of AMC shorts were able to get out this week. Obviously they got out at a loss, um, but uh, that honestly is what explains the price action on AMC alone. Is it, When you see a rally as violent as we saw in AMC from, from Wednesday, to, to, basically, um, to, to basically Friday, as incredibly violent as it was, um, that, that's short covering. Uh, take a look at March last year, um, or in 2020, when we had the S&P futures just rally like, you know, uh, 2,000, uh, insane amounts of points. It was like 1,000 points in, in like three, four days. That's short covering, that, that happens. Only short covering has rallies so violent. But yeah, I'm very curious to see how many shorts are left. I think we probably dropped a few percentage points on the rally this week alone. It's a great opportunity. Like I said, a lot of shorts are going to just take the loss and write it off against their other wins and or maybe just have a losing year. But it was a good opportunity for a lot of people to finally get out of that huge losing trade as a tax deduction. I'm not saying we don't even bounce further from here. But just be cognizant. There, were, there was a time, I, I'm not even kidding you, with, in, with small size, every day I was going in 500 shares uh, whenever it dipped and it would just, it would just ride. Um, obviously, um, you, know, you do have to watch the tape action to really um, be profitable on a trade like that. And I wasn't stupid about it, but um, I think that is dead. And I think a lot of the Wall Street bets, um, you know, the forum, they're getting way too diversified into Clove, into Wish, into Workhorse. And a lot of these trades, a BlackBerry, a lot of these trades have just been bricking. And I, I would like to have supported them. Even, I, I think they were even in on Space and Palantir. Uh, Palantir is a great name. It is not a meme stock, by the way. Um, but just be cognizant about that going forward. 
AMC, I'm still going to be trading, but the trade is going to be different. It's not going to be just random buying on dips and things like that anymore. You have to trade it differently than before, but it is still something you should keep your eyes on. Uh, the initial trade of just being able to buy the dip and just let it sit is done. GME, I'm still watching GME. GME trade is also potentially uh, done in that same sense, but uh, if you have a massive bleed out, uh, pay attention to GME. NVIDIA keeps bleeding, you guys. I'd mentioned that NVIDIA looked like it was topping out around 340, um, and it's bleeding still around 278. Um, we're gonna see if this gets a bounce here, but NVIDIA has been a high flyer for a very long time. Um, I don't know if it can uh, sustain a rally into year end. I think people are just taking profits off the table at this point of time. So uh, just be cognizant with NVIDIA. I'm watching that this week. Uh, NEO is a, has had a massive breakdown around, uh, to around $30 a share. A lot of this has to do with China. A lot of this has to do with you know, ADRs and a few other things uh, related to this. EV in general has been weak uh, due to Elon Musk just basically taking a shit over the market. So uh, NEO has broken down to 30. I am still watching this name. It is a must watch name, uh, honestly. Plug, um, still watching that, it's, it's been breaking. I, I've talked about these stocks for too much. Uh, I'm just gonna leave them as is. QuantumScape is a name that had a complete breakdown. It rallied to 44. I got out of the name around 37.38 and it has now cracked to 24. I don't think it's ready to rally again, but if you want to take a small size and quantum scape, uh, something that you're comfortable with a, a swing trade on, you might have to hold it for a little bit. Usually, usually I don't like to take the trades until the price action points positive again. But if you have a portfolio that has uh, quite a bit of cash in it, like I do right now, you could potentially buy it at this price. I think it's a relatively okay price to buy quantum scape. Um, anyway, enough talk about that. Uh, still trade Lucid. I talk about Lucid way too much. Still watch Lucid. Baba, I feel the same way about Baba as I did about QuantumScape. I mentioned Baba last week. Yeah, so a lot of the problems with uh, Alibaba it has to do with Jack Ma being a jackass. Problems in China cracking down. Uh, China is trying to uh, resolve some issues with their own stock market. Um, I think they're trying to form their own version of the SEC. Uh, and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, there's there's potentially crackdown. Another reason why NEO is also lower. So just be cognizant about that. I wanna talk about a few stocks as well um, before we go right into earnings uh, that have been bleeding out all year, but finally, or have been bleeding out for some time. You guys remember I was freaking out, Roku hit $400. I, I had to stop watching it because I sold most of my lot in Roku uh, I bought a, a whole bunch a long time ago, around 44, sold it at 80. I think I bought another bunch at 120, sold it at 180, and I left it alone after that. I had no idea what was happening, and the price action just kept running higher. Well, Roku's been bleeding out. This week it dropped as low as 180 till we have this massive snapback rally this week. So I'm, I'm watching Roku as well. Pay attention to Roku. Uh, we'll see if the snapback rally is uh, continue, continues to rally or people choose to sell this rally. So uh, I'm not sure how to play this. Um, this could be a Santa Claus rally week, but I would watch Roku. Beyond Meat has kind of the same action this week. I mean, Beyond Meat had, ha, has had a massive bleed out. DraftKings is kind of in the same boat. Most of the gross stocks have been very, very much affected. Um, but yet we see no movement in the S&P. We essentially had a stock market crash and a lot of high-flying growth names, but uh, the overall market indices have been holding because of you know the fangs, uh, which make up a large part of it. So DraftKings and also Moderna. And uh, all of these uh, stocks have had this type of action where they've had this massive bleed out. And then this week on Wednesday, they had a spike up. Uh, and even though the market was volatile Thursday, Friday, they continued to rally into the volatility. So um, I'm going to pay attention to these names this week. Um, if we're going to continue to see the rally or was it some sort of... Fuck! Was it some sort of short covering? 
um, that had occurred. And are we going to now see a, a continuation of a bleed out from here? So I'm going to pay attention to this. And um, they were sharp rallies. They were unusually sharp rallies do indicate short covering. Uh, these were high flying stocks. I can guarantee you people wanted to short them based on valuation alone. Um, and we're going to see uh, what happened with that. Anyway, let's go right into the earnings calendar. It is basically, in my opinion, the final trading week of the year, but we still have next week where people will position themselves um, for tax reasons for different, um, different ways. But uh, let's go into uh, earnings. Monday, we have Nike, honestly, not necessarily the greatest earnings uh, play. And we have Micron. Micron is a great earnings name. We have that this week. I think this is the must watch uh, tr uh, earnings trade of the week. On Tuesday, still, once again, we have Slim Pickens, General Mills. Uh, they manufacture Cinnamon Toast Crunch, guaranteed to give you diabetes, but uh, their stock has been running. I usually don't trade them that much earnings week, but like, like, like I said this week, we don't have that much going on. And then we have BlackBerry, which sounds so funny. That was a name off my radar for years and years. Wall Street Bets sort of brought them back. Having said all that, this company is dead as fuck. All right. So I think the Wall Street Bet trade, you know, I was trying to support some of their names for a while with AMC. I still trade AMC. Uh, space, but BlackBerry, I, I think you guys are spreading yourselves out too thin. We can complete compete as a whole on a couple of names, but when you're spread out over 30, 40 names, you're just asking for trouble, you guys. Just be cognizant. We could see some sort of rally on BlackBerry, ticker symbol BB, um, General Mills, ticker symbol GIS. And on Wednesday, we have a Paychex, P-A-Y-X. And that's it, guys. That's all for earnings. Just in case I forgot, uh, I hope I didn't, uh, make sure you watch Tesla, okay? Uh, I think on most days, if you don't know what to trade, you can trade Tesla. I think in a lot of ways, this is a more volatile version of S&P mini futures, just trading Tesla. I hope you guys have a good holiday week. Stay safe. Till next time. I just want the money, 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 money.